Happy Sunday everyone! In today's video, I'm going to take you along with me as I draw new Fibonacci levels inside of the S&P 500. Since the last time we drew these levels, we had our pullback areas, the S&P pulled back to the lowest of those levels before reaching these bottom three, and has since bounced. We've even made new highs here breaking above that previous high, which gives us a natural new pivot high and a natural new pivot low, which we can use to update some of these levels. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Fibonacci, be sure to check out our Fibonacci trading tutorial series. It's four different parts and it walks you through how to use the different Fibonacci tools in Thinkorswim. It's completely free and you'll get an understanding of how to build this roadmap for price action based off of highs and lows along with what it's previously done. Now coming inside of Thinkorswim here, let me start by first removing all of the drawings that we currently have on our chart. So I'll say clear drawing set, and now we have all of our previous levels erased and we can start from scratch. Now before we start drawing our levels, let's do a little bit of planning. I want to identify all of the different swing highs and swing lows that we're going to use when drawing our levels. The first one that stands out is our COVID high to our COVID low. This was February to March of 2020. And this to me, this swing right here is still the one that we're working our way between in terms of a really large roadmap for price action inside of the S&P 500. The next swing that stands out is the one we formed in 2022. That's using our high at the very beginning of the year to the low that we formed sometime in September. And this is the next swing that we're going to be analyzing to see what does price action look like when we use that as our roadmap. The goal is to see are there any levels here, any retracement levels that overlap between this swing and this swing. Now the last set of high to lows that we can use are the ones we formed in 2023. That's this high along with this low, much smaller in comparison to these other swings, but it still gives us an idea of how the S&P is reacting with 2023 in mind, and we can use this final set of levels to understand the entire roadmap, along with having a little bit of recency bias thrown inside of our Fibonacci analysis here. Now let's start first with the Feb 2020 levels, and then we'll make our way to each of these other two levels. I'm using the Fibonacci retracements tool and again, you can learn more about how to use this tool inside of the Fibonacci series here. Module two walks you through not only how to set up this tool the way I have it, but use it as well with some practice examples. So let's zoom in first. Let me fix this. And we'll use our February high to our February or March low. And that gives us these following retracement levels. Let me right click so we can see the 618 and the 236 levels as well. And this gives us our complete roadmap. If we take a look at where we are with regards to the COVID high to low, then currently the S&P has made its way all the way up to that 200% extension, which would be the greatest extension we have. And since then, we've pulled all the way back down to the 1272. Now, currently we're right back up to the golden ratio of 1618. And here is typically where we start to see some funny things happen. Now, if the S&P clears this and we continue making our way up, the last level that we have here from this Fibonacci high to low is 459.90. So call it near that 460 mark is where our current uh, levels from COVID high to low would give us that last little bit of extension. Now let's use the next set of levels, which are from 2022. So we'll use this swing high to this swing low. And that gives us a new set of levels that we can use to project. Now one thing right off the bat before I enable the other extensions, Notice how that 50% extension overlaps almost perfectly to a T with that golden ratio from our swing high to swing low of COVID. So that is the one level to me that stands out better than any others. There is an area of confluence here near the level of 415, let's call it for a nice clean number, but really 414.05 is where our most recent extension comes in and then 413.75 from the COVID high to low. So that's one place where we have a confluence where we would expect price to act as a little bit of a magnet to. And if we just study price action here, so far it looks like we've broken above this previous resistance point. Not unnatural to see a little bit of a retest after we have a breakout. Now let's move on to the last level that we have, which is from 2023. And there I can repeat the same exercise. Now on both of these levels, let me also enable the other ratios. 
So I'll turn on the 618, the 786, the 382, and the 236. And again, I show you how to set all of these up in that Fibonacci tutorial series. And then we have this one here as well. And let's edit this, and we can turn on the ratios there. Now, if I zoom out, we can see a lot of different levels on our chart, and we can start to figure out which ones we want to pay attention to, which ones are even in play. Now, currently, where price action is trading is near that 618 retracement of our 2022 swing high to 2022 swing low. And in between there, we've currently made our way back up to the 618. That 618 overlaps really nicely with the 1272 extension from our 2023 swing high to 2023 swing low. So this is another place of confluence. And funny enough, that's exactly where price is currently trading. In fact, we can see not only where price is trading, we can see a little bit of resistance there, but we can see how on Friday we tried to clear above it and we ended up coming back to essentially a doji candle. Now the golden ratio is the one that I think most people pay the most attention to. So if you were thinking of something like a self-fulfilling prophecy, that would be that 1618. That's near 441.58. So this zone right here between that 1272, so call it about 430 for a clean number to about 440 for a clean number, is where we might see price action chop between. But in the end, I find it highly unlikely if we were to just clear that 1618, and shoot straight to that 200% uh, extension near that 460 area. Seems like we're likely for a little bit of a pullback here. We've had quite a bit of a run. And in terms of our Fibonacci levels, we can see a few different overlaps with that 1272, along with that 1618, no overlaps there, but that is the golden ratio, which I think holds some weight on its own without having the overlaps. Now let's clean up some of these lines. So inside of this ratio, I'm going to, or this Fibonacci swing, I'm going to erase everything but that 500% level since it keeps our charts a little cleaner and I don't think those levels will be in play. If we zoom in here, same thing, we can clean up that 236 level, both swings, 382 level on both swings, and even the 618 here and the 786. It's currently it's that 1272 that's in play along with the 618. So this to me is how I'm currently seeing the S&P 500. There's a nice little confluence where we're currently trading at, which I think may act as a little bit of a resistance. We've also had this breakout, but we didn't see the same level of strength that I think we would expect to see after a breakout. But on the other hand, we also didn't see the same level of weakness where this candle completely reverses. So I think we may see some funny activity in between these two levels. It's also getting close to that summertime place where you might see volume dry up just a tad. And in terms of that larger level, which to me still acts as the magnet, you can't really deny that 1618 from that COVID swing high to swing low, along with the 500% extension from that February or from that 2022 swing high to swing low, that stands out here as that one place where the lines almost overlap. And I have to hover over in order for you to really see both levels. So this is the roadmap I have for the S&P 500. For those of you that are Fibonacci traders, I hope you found this useful as at least another practice exercise in using the retracements tool, getting some more experience. And for those of you looking for levels, this gives you some concrete areas where we expect price action to at least target towards, act as a magnet, along with definitive areas where we have seen price action previously react from. Hope you found this video useful. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.